our JDBC drivers are working, our JDBC URL for Postgres is working, we've got a basic create statement going in. Let's focus on some CRUD here. Now before I do my CRUD operation, I'm going to just right click and refactor that code and say extract method, call it the create table method, and that's just gonna move that code out of the main method here. And I'm actually gonna comment out that reference to that code because we only need to create the table once. We don't need to cre keep creating it. And now I'm gonna focus on doing an insert into the database. And instead of using the statement that you see on line 24 there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use something called a prepared statement. And the, the query looks a little bit different. The query looks like this. I'm gonna say var insert SQL equals insert into tasks because tasks is our database and we want to create a new record and our database only has two fields the primary key which will be auto generated and the name of the task to do um, values it's got to be plural even though we're only working on one value right now and i'm going to throw a question mark in there and of course, when you do inserts in your code, you don't hard code the valued insert. You get the valued insert from a, a microservice or from a RESTful API call or for a, a form being submitted or from the user, right? Um, so we don't hard code it in. We just do that. We create what's called a prepared statement and we allow that question mark to be filled in at runtime. Now, I will hard code the filling in, but this is a better way to, to do SQL. And now in order to get this prepared statement to work, we have to get a prepared statement object, prepared statement. So var prepared statement, we get that from the connection object. So prepare statement is the method call. And we have to pass it a string and notice the IntelliSense has done me dirty there. They're trying to prepare a statement with that JDBC URL. That is not what we want to do. We want to use the insert SQL. And of course, that question mark, we got to update it with something, you know, when the program runs. I'm going to hard code something and I'm going to say prepared statement dot set string and set that first string. Like you might have multiple strings because it's unusual to have a database with just one column in it, but this is just a, an example. And that first string is not going to be the JDBC URL. Maybe it'll be something like uh, learn JDBC and Postgres QL. I don't know, it was our first task to do. And then once you set the string, you just say prepared statement dot execute. It does sound Final it does sound deadly. We are executioners here. Um, and we can say system.out.println record created. Okay, and with that all looking handsome, I'm just going to right click and say run as a Java application. It now says record created, but you know where I'm from. I'm going to head into my Postgres database. I'm going to right click on tasks and then I'm going to select view data and I'm going to view the first 100 rows. I don't think there'll be 100 rows, but there should be at least one record there. And there you can see learn JDBC and PostgreSQL is inside my database. So there you go. Our create statement is working. I'm just going to tidy that up and say refactor extract method and call that create operation. Click OK, click Save. And maybe I'm going to add something different here. Learn Spring, because that's going to run the next time we run our application too. Um, but I think that's looking pretty handsome now. What's next? Maybe we'll take a look at the retrieve operation. The letter R in CRUD stands for retrieve. So uh, the next thing we need to do is just retrieve some data from our database. And that's just going to be, um, you know, a little select SQL query. So I can say var select SQL equals select star from tasks. This should return all of the, the tasks to me. Now, this is a little bit different from just a regular statement 
execution because we're actually getting data back. We're not just saying, hey, run this command and do something about it. We're asking for something called a result set to come back to us. So in order to, to execute this SQL query, we've got to do a couple of things. So uh, the first thing we need to do is get our statement object. So var statement equals connection dot create statement. So that's all standard stuff. We've seen that before. But then what we do is we say var result set equals statement dot execute query. It's not just execute, it's execute query. And we don't want that darn JDBC URL to be executed. We'll use it as we are creating that connection. But what we want to do is we want to execute that SQL query. Now that gives us a result set which holds all of the results from the database, which we can just loop through by saying while result set dot next. So go through each result set and then system dot out dot print lawn and just print lawn. Geez, what is the code there? Well, result set dot and then the name of the task is a string. So I'll say get string and it's just name, right? That's the name of the column in the database. That's what you specify there. If we wanted to get the ID, we would say get string ID. Although if it's integer, we could probably say get uh, integer, different data type. That now gives me the, the name of the stuff in the, the database and it should print them out. It should print out a couple of things. It should print out, of course, learn JDBC and Postgres. As this runs again and we do the create operation, we're going to add in the record learn spring. So we should actually see two things printed out if this runs properly. So let's give this a try. Run as a Java application. And now we do see it says learn JDBC and Postgres. It says learn spring as well because it's also been added to the database. And of course, if we come back over here and do a little run to make sure. Indeed, we've got two records in the database. We got two records printed out from our retrieve operation. And let's just tighten that up and say refactor extract track method. We'll call it the retrieve operation. And with the code extracted in there, we're looking pretty good. Last couple of things to do are the update and delete, which actually follows the prepared statement and the regular statement syntax. So we'll be able to finish that in short order. And that is what we're going to do next. So I'm going to quickly just finish off the update and delete operations. We absolutely have to. And so I'm just going to say var update SQL is going to look something like this. I'll say, you know, update the task table, update the tasks table and set the name equal to I don't know, uh, question mark, I guess, is the way we want to do it if we're going to use a prepared statement. Um, and we will do that anywhere it just says learn spring. So where the name equals learn spring, exclamation mark, we're going to update it to something else. Maybe we'll update it to spring boot. I'm just going to look at the database there. You can see it says learn spring, exclamation mark, and that second record. So we're going to update that to something. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to use this same syntax here from the prepared statement. There's nothing new going on here, right? We get the prepared statement from the connection object. It's the update SQL that we want. Instead of learn spring, we want to say learn spring boot. And with three exclamation marks, and now that executes it and we can say record updated, right? So it's just just piggybacking off the code that we've already written. Just to, the only thing interesting here is really the change to the update statement. Now, again, every time we run our code, that create method runs. So I want to put something different in there. Say learn Mojo. That's the programming language that's uh, set to uh, replace Python. Um, I got a number of tutorials over on the server side about that. So uh, you should check that out uh, if you're into AI at all. But there we go. That is the update operation in theory when this runs that record where it says learn spring should be changed to learn spring boot so let's run this as a java application it looks like it did or did not oh uh the update happens after 
the result set runs after the retrieve. So I got to go to the database to see this, but I'll click play here. And there we go. The learn spring record number two has been changed to learn spring boot. Okay, well, we got to finish this off, right? We got to be honest here. I'm going to take this code and refactor it and say extract method. And we'll call that the update operation. Okay, CRU. Wouldn't be honest if we didn't do the delete. And again, the delete is fairly straightforward. So it's var delete SQL. And the SQL is just delete from tasks. It's not even delete star from tasks. This will just delete every record in this database. And in this case, we actually just follow the syntax that we used earlier when we did the whole create table, right? Um, so we just get the statement object, and then we just execute the statement. I probably don't even have to copy and paste. So var statement equals connection dot create statement, statement dot execute and pass in the string, not the JDBC URL, man, doing me dirty all that time. Um, and then we can say system.out.println. It was all deleted. Okay, there we go. Um, and in theory, if I run this code, run as a Java application, it runs, it says it was all deleted, but you know where I'm from. I'm going to come over here, I'm going to click play, and boom, all of those records are now deleted. So there you go. That is the, the whole thing. I'm going to tidy this up and say uh, refactor extract method and delete operation. And boom, there we go. We were able to do everything with our PostgreSQL database, all CRUD operations. And I think that is a pretty awesome. Anyways, I got a bunch of tutorials on doing this with Spring. I've got a full JDBC tutorial on YouTube, and there's lots more information over at the server side. So if you want to learn more, join me over on the server side. Until next time.